I'm Elizabeth at Literary Princess, and today I am doing my August TBR. So this is an extremely ambitious TBR that is filled almost entirely with my exam readings because I need to get going. Um, I had originally hoped to take these exams at the end of August when I got back to school, but I am thinking of pushing it off more toward October now, possibly even December and like at the end of the semester because I'm not getting enough red. So this TBR is huge. Do I think I'm gonna get to all this? No, but I would really like to because I need to pick up the pace. So I'm gonna break it down by each list. We're gonna do my feminist theory list first. Then we're going to do the secondary sources of my women's popular Victorian fiction and then the long 19th century, and then the novels from the Victorian women's popular fiction. And then I do have one book on here that is for fun, because I deserve fun in my life, <laughs> even though clearly this university does not think so. So let's jump right in. First up for feminist theory, I have The Mad Woman in the Attic by Sandra Gilbert and Susan Gubar. I have read part of this before at various times. I used it for a paper on Uncle Tom's Cabin. I guess it was two years ago now, geez. Um, and I used it in my undergrad. It's long though, <laughs> it's really long. So, what can I say about this? They are looking at 19th century women novelists and the distinctly female female imagination, somebody says on the back. So um, Gilbert and Kubar look at Jane Austen, um, Mary Shelley, Emily Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, and then Emily Dickinson, who is kind of the odd one out because she's American. So maybe I don't need to read that chapter, <laughs> but I probably will just so I can mark the book off as totally read. Yeah, this is chunky. I have read the chapters on the Brontes before, as well as one of the Eliot chapters. And then... I forget which one talked about Uncle Tom's Cabin, but I read that one too. So yeah, chunky, but at least I know this is good and I know that I like it, <laughs> even if I don't always agree with them. All right, so next up is another kind of chunky one. This is Surpassing the Love of Men, Romantic Friendship and Love Between Women from the Renaissance to the Present by Lillian Faderman. This is one that my, well, my, um, supervisor for this list suggested I look into Lillian Faderman and this is the one that sounded most interesting to me because I am interested in women loving women in Victorian literature. So I picked this up. Again, it's chunky. Oh, there's pictures though. That's fun. Nice. Anyway, yeah, chunky, but the print is large. So there's, there's that. All right, now for not a chunky one. This is The Proper Lady and the Woman Writer, Ideolo Ideology as Style in the Works of Mary Wollstonecraft, Mary Shelley, and Jane Austen. This is by Mary Poovey. So Mary Shelley and Jane Austen are obviously within my time period. Mary Wollstonecraft is before it, but I, am re I did read Vindication of the Rights of Women for this list as well. And I thought that this might be interesting. It says it's an integration of feminist feminism and Marxist literary criticism. So that should be good. And it sounds, I mean, from the title, it sounds like very similar to what I do. So there we go. And then last one for feminist theory is Blood, Bread and Poetry, Selected Prose by Adrienne Rich. This is a book of essays. I have read a few of these, but I want to read the rest of them. Uh, luckily, a lot of them are quite short. So yay, <laughs> yay short. 
I really like Adrienne Rich. There's, I mean, I, there's some problems with some of the stuff she says, but I ultimately like the way that she writes, which is always nice. All right, so then on to the secondary sources for my Victorian women's list. So first up, and you're gonna notice that some of these have been on previous TBRs, and that's because yes, and I didn't get to them, so they're going back on. And that's the case for some of these others as well. <laughs> but anyway, so first up is Silent Voices, Forgotten Novels by Victorian Women Writers, edited by Brenda Ayers. This is a collection of essays. I'm not going to be reading all of them, just the ones that I think are most relevant to me. I've also read some of them before, so hopefully this will move quicker than some of the others. It's obviously dealing with women writers and novels that we don't really talk about anymore. So I know she talks about what, or somebody, because it's, it's an anthology. I know someone talks about Anne Bronte in here. Anne Thackeray, Sarah Grand, Mary Corelli. So some of these are women who are on my list that I'm reading their novels. So this will be very helpful. Next up, is Victorian Women's Fiction, Marriage, Freedom, and the Individual by Shirley Foster. So this is focusing on the ways in which female novelists have in their creative work challenged and scrutinized contemporary assumptions about their own sex, um, looks at how 19th century women writers confront the conflict between the pressure of marriage and the alternatives of being a single woman or a professional woman. So this sounds extremely interesting and I think I'll enjoy it and it's useful for what I do. Then we have The Improper Feminine, the woman's sensation novel and new women writing by Lynn Pickett. I have also read part of the, this before. So the sensation novel and the new woman novel are two genres that I am looking at in my lists. So this is important for me to get some background context on them. And then we have one that doesn't have a real cover because it's a library book. This is New Women Fiction, Women Writing, First Wave Feminism by Anne Heilman. And again, this is dealing with the new women writers and it's short. <laughs> okay, now on to the novels because those are more interesting. So for my long 19th century list, first up, we've got one that was on a previous list that I didn't read. This is Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. I have not read any Anthony Trollope before. And I don't really know what this is. I know this is one of his um, Chronicles of Barsetshire. Bars so I've heard great things about Anthony Trollope. I'm excited to get to him. All right, next up is one I'm not reading in full, and it was on my Jane Austen July TBR, and I didn't get to it. This is the Journals and Letters of Frances Burney. So I am reading these to look at her perspective on publishing as a woman writer in the late 18th century. And there are letters here with her publishers. I actually looked through and saw which ones I want to read, and now I don't remember because there's kind of a lot of them. But yeah. I meant to get to it in July and I didn't. All right, next up is some plays by Oscar Wilde. I'm going to be reading The Importance of Being Earnest and Lady Windermere's Fan. Um, these are short because they're plays, thank goodness. So I can probably read these in like a day each. And this is not the only plays that I have on this list actually, but I've never read any of Oscar Wilde's plays. I've read The Picture of Dorian Gray though, but not for school. I'd read that on my own. I just hit my hand on the table. Nice. Anyway, so I'm excited to check out Wilde's plays. I've heard they're really good. All right, and then I have Kim by Rudyard Kipling. So this deals with the orphan son of an Irish soldier who spends his childhood as a vagabond in Lahore? Lahore? I don't know how that's pronounced. L-A-H-O-R-E. Um, with an old Tibetan Lama, he travels through India. Okay. So, lots to talk about with colonialism here and the British Empire. It's 
also blessedly short. Yay. I also, I kind of like Kipling. Um, I read some of his short stories for my post-colonial literature class and they're enjoyable. There's problems with them. God, there's problems with them, but I had fun. So I'm expecting this will be enjoyable. And even if it's not, it's short. Yay. And next up is one that I'm actually rereading. This is Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I read this in college, like undergraduate. Um, it deals with Thomas Gradgrind and his school that he is um, setting up on the philosophy of fact. And then his daughter, Louisa, who ends up in a marriage that she's not happy with. And I remember really enjoying this. It's not one you hear about a whole lot, I feel. And it's nice and short, unlike some of Dickens' other novels. <laughs> anyway, I remember really enjoying that, so I'm excited. And then last for this list, I am reading Mrs. Warren's Profession by George Bernard Shaw. This is also a reread for me. I read it in undergrad. This is a play that deals with both the idea of the new woman and then of the fallen woman. And I really enjoyed this. I'm excited to reread it and it'll be nice and quick because it's a play. All right, next up is the Victorian women's popular fiction novels. So first up, I've got The Clever Woman of the Family by Charlotte Mary Young, who gets mentioned a lot in the secondary sources I'm reading, but I've never read any of her works. So this deals with a group of women in a small community and the main character, Rachel, is an opinionated woman who wants a mission in life and it re leads to tragicomic results, according to the back. So this is long. <laughs> this is really long. Oh God. It's not really long, but it is long. Yeah, it's over 500 pages. Okay, wow. Yay, I've got some chunky ones for this list. Great. I'm gonna run out of space. <laughs> anyway, um, I've heard that it's, it's interesting. I've heard that it is very readable. And apparently, according to the back, it is fascinating if infuriating. <laughs> So that's always fun. All right, next up is one that I know next to nothing about. This is The Daughters of Danaeus by Mona Caird. And like, I know so little about it that I don't even know how to pronounce the title. Um, it is dealing with, I believe, a group of sisters. Um, it's about the power of marriage to control women's lives. So right up there with what I'm interested in. <sighs> Again, chunky. Will you fit? <laughs> All right, next up is a shorter one. This is the story of an African farm by Olive Schreiner. I just read Imperial Leather last month, which had a very interesting re um, critical look at this novel. So I'm very excited to read this. It's about two cousins growing up in South Africa. And apparently Lyndall is the main one and she is clever, beautiful, and doomed. So it's not gonna be a happy ending, which is fine. But I'm just gonna, there we go. <laughs> All right, and then last is Marcella by Mary Ward, also known as Mrs. Humphrey Ward. And this is about a young woman named Marcella, obviously, who falls in love with the ideals of socialism. I don't know a whole lot about this. I have actually attended a conference panel with an essay about it, but I still don't really know much about it. Um, Mary Ward was a pretty major author of the time and considered an anti-feminist. She wrote against the idea of women's rights. Actually, a lot of, I feel like a lot of the authors I'm reading have, Margaret Oliphant was like that too, but so it's always interesting to see their novels, especially when their novels, even though they're against women's rights, their novels are more in line with the idea of women's rights. So that's all the exam reading that I'm hoping to get to. Do you think I'm insane? I think I'm insane. And then I do have one fun novel. 
This is The Idiot by L.F. Bodeman. So many people have been reading this lately. Um, Alana Stell, Shelley Swearingen, um, Fraser Simons from Springboard Thought. And I, I want to read it, damn it. <laughs> I've had this on my TBR forever. I've had my physical copy forever. And I just want to finally get to it. And I want fun after this. Because this isn't fun. Well, I mean, some of it's fun. But stuff toward the bottom is not fun. So I just really wanted something enjoyable and... Yeah. So this um, deals with a young woman named Selin, who is the daughter of Turkish immigrants, um, going to Harvard in the 90s. And this is her first year at college. There is a sequel, Either Or, which deals with her second year. And that just came out this year. And I want to read that too. So I need to read the first one. So that is my highly ambitious August TBR. Let me know down in the comments below, have you read any of these? What did you think? What are you planning to read this August? Do you think I'm a nut? I think I'm a nut. Yeah, it's been great chatting with you all. I am gonna go start reading some of this. <laughs> I will see you soon, bye.